after a 5200 mile run copper is slightly elevated whoa that doesn't sound good <laughs> so guys so uh today we're gonna do something that i should have done as soon as i got the car and that's change the oil now in my defense the reason why i haven't changed the oil yet is because i've been waiting for this what this is is this is a this is an oil analysis kit from Blackstone's laboratory. And the whole purpose of this, as I've discussed in previous videos, I've talked about going NAT. So before I actually jump into going NAT, I wanna make sure that this motor is perfectly healthy and that there's nothing going on inside. So the best way to do that is you can do a couple of tests, compression test, uh, you can do a leak down test, and you can also do an oil analysis test. And this is basically where you collect an oil sample from your, while you're doing your oil change, you collect some of the oil, and you send it to these guys. And what they do is they run a series of tests on your oil, and they send you a nice little report to tell you the overall health of your engine, what's going on basically. And uh, so yeah, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it and uh, Let's see what happens. So, so you want to break it free first, and then you want to collect the oil midstream. So that's the sample that they call for. All right, here it goes. Now, that's about midstream right there, so you want to come in and catch them. And that's it. That's your sample right there. Now that that's all wrapped up, let's go ahead and bag this thing up. Okay. I got some air bubbles in here. Let me get all that air out there. That's all right. Remember guys, don't fill this up with oil. Fill this up with oil. Again. All right. Now we have one more thing that we need to send off with them and that's this document. Basically it's like a, you know, year make model, that kind of stuff. Method of payment. Let me see. Come on, focus. Yeah. All right, so I have everything ready to go. So. I'm gonna send this off. I don't know how long it's gonna take. It may take one, two, maybe three weeks, but on YouTube, that's like a second. So I'm gonna jump back on as soon as I have the results. And yeah, we'll find out what the, uh, <laughs> what the lab results are from the oil analysis kit uh, real soon. So uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'm back and I got the results right here. They sent me a nice, beautiful email. It's in a PDF file. I wanna just pop it up on the screen here shortly. But before I do, just wanted to kinda of touch up on why I did this. I know some of you guys are gonna to wanna to, want to know a little bit more about this. Basically, whenever you wanna boost your NA block, it's always a good idea to make sure that you have a healthy platform to start with. This way, you don't just end up dumping your money down the drain. I've known people personally that have gone NAT and it didn't last long. <laughs> so, you know, and um, I think a lot of headaches can be avoided as long as you do all the precautionary measures beforehand. So that's what this is. This is just another step, just making sure that I have a healthy platform, nothing's going on internally. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the results. And I'm pulling this up right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and read the comments section first and then, jump into the graph here below it. Edward, this is a nice start to your SE 300s file. After 3000 miles of oil use, it's a good, or sorry, it's good to have metals mostly low compared to universal averages. The far right column is based on other 2JZ GE engines after a 5200 mile run. Copper is slightly elevated. Whoa, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> Uh, so we'll watch it, we'll watch it, but six PPM isn't enough metal to have us running for the shop, especially if the engine runs strong. Good. Yeah, it does run strong. Remember we did some dyno pulls on it? <laughs> we'll just keep copper as a metal to watch. If it's steady, 
or improves, you'll be in good shape. The oil held up nicely, keeping a 5W30 viscosity, and we didn't find any harmful contamination to speak of. So let's just scroll down here. Look at, I'm looking at the aluminum, iron, copper, lead, tin, nickel, magnesium, silver, titanium, potassium. So everything seems to be in to their findings. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not an expert. I don't know what, you know, what most of that means, but according to his notes, it sounds like I have a healthy block. And even though the copper was slightly elevated, he just made a note that it's nothing that he is concerned with. What I'm probably going to do is maybe in, I don't know, another couple of months, whenever the next oil change is, send it off again and see if there's any changes there and see what they say. Uh, yeah. But in the meantime, hopefully you guys enjoy this video and hopefully this will encourage you guys to try this out for yourself. I don't know. Maybe it'll save you a headache in the uh, future or maybe I should just send it. I don't know. I'm still on the fence. I'm like 95% sure I want to go NAT. 5% is like just do a 1J because it comes with everything you need and just boost it and just don't look back. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But NAT is looking very promising. So yeah. Uh, in the meantime, if you haven't already, hit that little subscribe button so you don't miss any of the uh, content coming out in the future. And uh, give me a thumbs up. Like the video. And yeah, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Rock, rolling to the top where we going, never stop on my